case you're wondering, we've been traveling, so I'm, I'm not sitting at a desk. I, my mic sometimes laying on a pillow. Um, and so I apologize for the inconsistencies in the sound. Um, in my heart, I know one day it's going to be as clear as any other channel. So, And to me, I'm not concerned about polish. And a lot of people are, and I don't blame you. But information is information. Information, information is valuable. But a lot of climate concerns, and we're gonna we're gonna just show you a pattern here. Uh, Asia as a whole had eight warmest May on record. Arctic. Sea ice May 2019 was 8.5 percent below 1981 to 2010 average. That's temp almost 10 percent. The second smallest May sea ice extent since satellite records began in 79. So you got that. It's this. So it seems like it's the second hottest May on record. When we say we broke a record, and remember, these records were first broken in 2011, most of them. And then they were, those records were blown out of the water in 2016. And so when you see a heat record, you know, you got to remember that you're, you're breaking those records. You're breaking a 2011 record in most places that they're talking about, and you're blur then you're breaking the second world record. So it was unprecedented in 2011, and then it went so high it became unprecedented again in 2016. And here we are in 2019, May the second hottest. Now you just remember that. So global average temperature, May, Average global temperature, ocean temperature, was the fourth highest for May since the records began. And because of the you throw in the uh, the ocean temperatures, th that throws your average down. And um, Alaska had its sixth warmest May since uh, statewide records began. You, not, so that's that's not too bad. Um, I mean, in a relative sense. It's, it's sorry about the dog in the background. If not my dog. The contiguous United States, uh, 500 tornadoes came across. And remember, tornadoes are a function of heat deltas, where if there's just an extreme change in temperature. The change when hot air coming from one direction meets cold air going from another direction, that's a tornado turbulence nightmare. I think the dog is attacking somebody from the CIA. Good girl. Good girl. Alright. Now I'm going to have to compete with the dog. And I, and I would yell at the dog to shut up, but the dog doesn't listen. So over 500 tornadoes and came across the U.S. in May, uh, more than doubled a three-year average of 226. And when you know torna tornado counts are so misleading because sometimes they leave out F1s, F2s. Sometimes they're just talking about F4s. And some, you know, so there's a thousand ways to, to skew a tornado statistic. Boy, you know, when we were trying to figure out what was going on, it was a nightmare trying to piece it all together. The Hawaiian region had its highest May temperatures departure from average than normal. South America, so that was kind of like giving you, you know, that's on the equator, so it's gonna, it's gonna get hotter sooner there. So there's kind of your hint what's to come. It's highest May temperature departure from average on record for May. So there had to be several heat records in Hawaii in May. So that means June is going to be rough for people that are further north. As a whole, South America made May temperatures tied to 2002 as the third highest on record. You know, and I, I know in South America, how many people reporting? Is that just Brazil? I don't know. Africa, May was Africa's second warmest. Another um, May 20, sea ice was 13% below for Antarctica, the smallest May sea ice extent on record. So the Southern Hemisphere is telling you what's going on. And it was soon to reach the Northern Hemisphere. Uh, 
New Zealand. Above average temperatures were present across much of New Zealand. Above average. This was the third warmest May in the nation's 111 year record. The third warmest May. So that means they were just running behind probably 2011 and 2016. But yeah, June, June, June comes though. And then people were saying how cold Australia is or was, or but you know I, I'm not seeing any of that. I'm seeing the record warm or driest temp situations in Australia this winter. Uh, they did have a, a subarctic vortex from south, just like our Arctic vortex, bring some cold air in there, and that passed on. Australia had drier than average conditions. Western Australia had the largest May deficit in water. How how far below average? 83%. Now, if you don't think 83% is significant, why are you watching? This was Western Australia's third driest May since records began. So they're giving you an idea what's to come. So June comes and and you'll see what happens in June. We're going to still stay on Australia because Australia had record heat for the summer. And that's telling us, beware, beware. And I feel sorry for Australia because their summer comes when, get this, their summer comes when Earth is closest to the sun. And if you look at the irradiance records for the, you know, every six months from June, you'll see the irradiance goes down for planet Earth at Earth distance. And it goes down significantly. So when they have summer in Australia, it's summer. That's why we've been putting out warm warnings down under since we started doing warnings for heat, heat, heat. Okay, so here's about how the scientists were caught off guard. Australia sweltered through its hottest month in the history in January. That's their summer. Spurring mass deaths of fish, there's even birds and bats, fire warnings, concerns along climate scientists. Extreme heat is hitting faster and harder than anticipated. Well, if you're an expert and you say, well, yeah, it's going to raise 2.5 degrees in 10 years, and you just over, you broke you broke just you know two global records with another unprecedented record. Yeah, I would say you're heating faster than anticipated. This is very important because these are the same people who say carbon dioxide is why we're heating. So if you have a climate model based upon carbon dioxide and you say, oh yeah, based upon our calculations, it's going to heat 2.5 globally in, by 2025. And all of a sudden, you know, you're standing in stuff that's way above your anticipated. Today, you're standing way above that. So then that model was wrong. There was something wrong about your model. But the whole basis for your model was carbon dioxide. So it's time to take carbon dioxide, throw it in the trash, but before you do, look up the ice core records and see how we've had high carbon dioxide in the past and life still flourished. And frankly, Earth would probably be better off without a man on it. For the first time since records began, the country's mean temperature for Australia exceeded 30 centigrade or 86 Fahrenheit, according to the Bureau of Meteorology, BOM. <clears throat> which said daily extremes in some places were just short of 50. Okay, and he said those were unprecedented. Now, there you go. You're, now you just broke 2011 and 2016. So three unprecedented records in, in less than 10 years. There's been so many records, it's really hard to count. No kidding on Andrew Watkins, senior climatologist, after January registered Australia's warmest month for maximum and minimum temperatures. This followed the warmest December on record with a heat wave every Australian state. And you look at the, uh, just what it means to that, look at this uh, schematically, the highest on record 
attempts very much above average above average so the closer you got to the water the lower the temperatures became but how much average do you see anywhere so you know when in your entire continent does this and other continents are doing it I'd say your climate model for heat is a little conservative and that's because you're not taking account solar radiation now here's that article Australia's extreme heat is a sign of things to come oh no but I had a cold night last night I had to put on my covers hottest month ever Oof. yeah that was brutal down there and April 2019th was second hottest in record for the globe June okay here we are in June was the hottest on record for the globe so there we go 2011 70,000 heat records um, again those were blown out of the water I mean they were it wasn't just like we inched it out we blew the 2011 out of the water and 2011 was miserable 2001 was miserable the, the key you know the, you get out of the atmosphere temperatures and just go right to your biggest ocean and see what's going on there and you see departures from normal and you can see where it's been headed that pot of water that's warming on the stove called our oceans um, is still being cooked it's and it's, nobody's gone over and turned off the oven yet more notable stats the sea ice shrinks to market I mean markedly at both poles and generally Antarctica has been what do I say um, slower to melt than the Arctic and I, I don't know what that is I, you know it might have something to do with methane though in the Arctic average Arctic ice extent coverage for April was 8.4 percent below that's almost 10 percent um, the that's a below average the lowest for April on record uh, the Antarctic sea ice extent was 16.6 percent below average that was double that's double what the Arctic was doing in that in that month the third smallest on April on record climate by the numbers April the average global temperatures 1.6 degrees above the 20th century average making it the second hottest April behind when everybody say it 2016 last month uh, was 43rd consecutive April with above average global temperatures April 412 consecutive month 412 months that saw above average global temperatures well what does that do to your average are you factoring that into your average so when you usually when your average is harder to beat when you factor in your higher numbers because your average drifts up and then it's harder and harder to get above that average but not on planet earth not when you're talking about temp because the heat on the stove has not been turned off so then the biggest issue then that's left is methane and so that's that screams Arctic and Russian permafrost and and then what's underneath the ocean is astounding in terms of methane 